Wait, did you really just say let's get this bread while eating bread? Yep. Okay, so that's 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 the level of cognition we're at here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, You're fucking thing, on, dude. See a thing, say a thing. All right, so, <laughs> uh, Marcus, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I can say I was looking forward to this one, but just in the chit chat we've had for the last few minutes, like it's let's go right now. I'm very excited to announce the first official sponsor of the Redacted Culture Cast. Obsidian Arms is one of those companies that reflects the many facets of gun culture. Not only are their firearms frequently found on competition fields like USPSA and 3Gun, but they are a Minnesota-based, U.S.-sourced original equipment manufacturer. Obsidian Arms makes their own punch and tool kits for the amateur and professional gunsmith out of Little Canada, Minnesota that come with a lifetime warranty. Whether it is fine parts that require a Swiss machine or you're in the design phase and are looking for an American machine shop that is in tune with the needs of gun culture, go check out Obsidian Arms at obsidianarms.com. Thank you. And now back to the show. Dive so, in. So I'm going to I'm going to start with a content warning for those who are listening. If you are easily offended and mild mannered in such a way, because we're not really talking about offensive topics, but if if if, if like th th we'll use this one as this is this is probably the level of co co cognition that we're going to deal with. Um, I recently reheard something re regurgitated, and that was something like "good and evil, right and wrong are are oftentimes subjects that are like are, are what is it are are often not times not the way things really are." And and I was like, and the the, the first thing that I realized was that's what stupid people think. It's not. It's, it, it, it's it, in other words, it, it's it's that's what stupid people think, because just because you cannot figure it out doesn't mean it's not true. And that's a problem. And so when you have like a complex moral situation, I was reading Enough by Mark Kelly and Gabby Giffords. It's this gun control book. It's 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 hilarious. It, and, and as I've been reading it, I've realized who their target audience is. But there's a there's this part of the story where they're talking about the the guy who ended up shooting Gabby Giffords, which is not something that we'd condone. And that kid was an evil person. But you know what? Getting shot didn't make Gabby Giffords a good person either. And so in a complex like it, it isn't it, it, you might have complex moral situations. But there is this thing called right and wrong, because if there is no such thing as right and wrong, then you have no value of in your participation. It might just be bigger than the scope of your vision at the time. Maybe read a book, maybe learn about it. And so that's the content warning. If this idea that we're going to talk about nuanced subjects or even moral arguments like cowardice is, is something that is not for you, then um thank you for the first ad read i guess <laughs> that's not the right way of saying it no it's not the first ad read thank you for the first uh thank you for thank you for listening and we're gonna let, let's get into it yeah so i i would even like to to add to your your intro here right i don't think it's that people don't understand right from wrong because right and wrong is it's there's some things that are fairly objective in being right and wrong right mm. i think that it's everything is based on people's delusions. So they would rather feel as if the thing they're doing isn't wrong objectively. Yes. And I think they like to give themselves the space of doing the evil thing without having to feel all the negative things that come with the objectively evil thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will, mankind will always justify his malice. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, it's, oh, I, like, uh, what was the, the, what's a great title? It's um, In Defense of Looting. Oh, we're not robbing you and stealing from your shop. We're just getting reparations for something that happened to us. Or, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, or even, like, even the, the, I think more specifically in our arena, though, would be, like, this, um, the vengeful hero character. Like, how many mm -hmm. stories start where the main character's wife gets killed, and then he goes on, like, a vengeance pact, and, like, or a vengeance story. It's like okay, like what I, what that what that is doing is that vengeance is the ab, uh, is the destruction of justice, and it is the replacement of yourself with justice. I'm sorry, re you replace justice with yourself, and so, and that's and that's what vengeance does. It corrupts both the. Per that's why when they say if you're gonna go down a path of vengeance, dig two graves, because yeah. you are elevating your self importance to the level of justice itself, which is kind of self worshipy if you ask, and usually ends pretty poorly. And so we do that in our own environment, though, because it's easier to justify 
hating my neighbor or some weird idea like that some not weird idea some some like fictional plot line than it is to recognize that vengeance is mine saith the lord um and that's just i think that's just my point on it so no yeah yeah. i'm getting i'm getting i'm getting i'm getting you like mid chew yeah i know no that's um we we see it throughout society and i think that's actually like i know i'm saying left versus right i don't actually believe in left versus right paradigm i don't think it exists okay. however there are a group of people and you, you we've seen it we we're looking to remove objectivity and make everything subjective it's way harder to 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 gauge anything if everything's subjective right well like and, and so that's why i i harp on people really hard when i hear my truth i was like stop full stop do not use that fucking phrase you can say your experience, you can say whatever else, but you will not go ahead and corrupt the word truth. Truth is absolute. Truth is objective. Mm-hmm. It is this thing and nothing else. By saying my, you're making something objective subjective. Mm-hmm. So even in even in the way that we speak, you have to curtail that early because if it starts, it's, it's already starting to be fairly pervasive in, in, um, in our society now. Everyone's like, I'm living in my truth. I'm like, you're living in your lived experience. You're not living a truth. Like you're this, you're living. And even then your life is only seen through your perception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if you want to, like, if you want, if, if you want to like turn into a meme level reaction, okay, narcissist sounds good. Like that's what you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking my truth. Wow. That's something a narcissist would say. Have you been diagnosed? You know, like that's that's probably how you'd start it, right? Because it's like, oh yeah, my truth. You do not have objective authority over the thing called truth. Yeah. So let's not let's not let's not let's just get off the boat. You know, hey hey hey. I don't suggest academia for you. Just let me say, oh you know, or maybe I do suggest academia so that one person will pay another person a bunch of money, which you'll have to pay them back for, so that you can get told that you are intelligent when you're not intelligent. You know what I mean? wild yeah the academic <laughs> system i mean if i wanted to get crazy crazy bitter against the academic system for some people who no one's going to want to hear this but for some people the sole purpose of academia is to extract wealth from your bank account like you're going to get told how to you're going to get told that your ideas are great that you're smart that you're so expressive that you're really talking about oh how does this make you feel how does you know, the, the, what, how does the three laws of logic make you th- feel? And you're like, oh, well, I really think the non, you know, the whatever it was, the, the, the non, not non-compete, it's the, um, what's one, like uh, non-contradiction, whatever. I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the uh, there is no third option. Why am I blanking on this one? Mm. Um, whatever. It's like, well, I feel like that's just not enough choices and it's, and it's oppressive. And you're like, okay, cool. Thanks. Um, $30,000 a semester will give you a degree. Thank you very much. You know, and now somebody else will spend the money. You're going to have to pay us back and we're going to give you a degree in, in, you know, advanced bullshittery, but Hey, you know what? You feel good about yourself. Uh huh. Now go forth and put your bullshit on the rest of the world. Oh, make yeah. it everyone's problem. Make, yeah. Make, <laughs> make, you know, um, uh, there, we uh, we need to come up. With, uh, there's a word that we're gonna. St- I want to start using, and it's it's. I want to start diagnosing certain types of books as illiterature, because it's mm. it's the literature that an illiterate person thinks is smart. And you're like, oh, cool, you read a book. You know, I'll just pat my head and rub my belly. I guess you know. Thanks. Yeah. But it's 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 that type of uh, pseudo intellectual approach. It's illiterature. It's it's. Mm. I've got a nice little shelf of it over here. We uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and dive headfirst into cowardice, dude. I was waiting. Yeah. For, I was I was waiting for this. <laughs> I was. You were waiting for this. I All got right. Snacks. <laughs> okay. So uh, it, it, this is going to be something that happened, and this is going to be a, a conversation that is going to be fun. Um, as far as cowardice goes, okay, what? If your if your cannon is ready, just fire, dude. Just do it. Launch. So go into it. Let's 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 start the diatribe because there's this this talk about Holosun now. If you have a Holosun, you're a traitor to the United States. Now, just so you know, just so you, I don't you weren't at Shot Show this year, right? No. I that was the first time I started hearing this kind of this. It it it, it follows a certain language. Like I was hearing you describe it earlier, and I was like, I've heard that exact phrase made in that the exact way before. And it was a right around the time of SHOT Show. And mm. so um, 
And so it was right around the time of SHOT Show, so just a couple months ago. And sometimes ideas are born over here and worm their way over there, and then somebody else says it. Yeah. But what uh, what's what's the what's the deal with what's what's the deal with Hall of Sun and being a traitor? Okay. So I'm not gonna be putting out people's names and stuff like that. They can go on Instagram if they want that drama. Mm -hmm. Um but anywho, uh I won't even say one gentleman. There were a few people that parroted this as well. So it's I don't think it's actually just one guy. Um, but essentially to the effect of if you buy Hal Sun and directly support China, um, you're a traitor to your country, right? Mm -hmm. Which in general, if you know anything about history, when did globalization start? Globalization started in early, early, I think early 1900s. And then you had um, outsourcing, which started in the, pretty much the early 80s. You could also so, make, you could also make the argument or, or the argument that like globalization started with the sailboat, or you know sure or, uh, like but what we're mean I think what we're meaning by globalization is that the ability to travel the world and engage in international commerce yes. is no longer an explicit it's no longer the explicit uh, domain of kingdoms and governments, right? So. So we're inter we are intertwined with China no matter what we do at this point. That's mm -hmm. just the way it works. Um, so when I when I heard that said, and I was just like, okay, there's, there's a little bit of there's a lack of consistency here, yeah. um, because we we see a couple of situations. The one thing, the two things that I noted was the ATF brace ban and COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So people were, you know, hooting and hollering about what they won't do and, you know, this, that, and the third. And, and guys talk about the ATF like they're going to engage an agent on site, dude. Dude, oh, get real, get real ballsy online, man. And I'm just like, you don't have to be that way. One, I know you're not going to do it. And then two, like, you're not winning any points here by, you know, by beating your chest. Um, So, but they're like, oh, I'm never going to do it. But then they're like, hey. Dangles little carrot for hey, we'll uh, we'll approve your uh, your suppressor faster if you do it during this period. And then dudes were just like looking around a little bit, like, hey man, maybe I'll just go ahead and do it. And I'm just like, eh, wrong. I was like, weak, weakness, yeah. fucking weak. I was like, how dare you talk all this shit, act like you're gonna be that guy, and then the moment they dangle a carrot in front of you, some low hanging fruit, your your values crumble at the mm -hmm. first sign. And this isn't even pressure, by the way. This isn't even pressure. This is just them making something convenient for you, and you're going ahead and you're shedding your values. Those aren't your values to begin with. They weren't your values to begin with, yeah. They were no. never your values. That I'm like that. That was your values because it was convenient to say. It was like it, it was never anything you internalized. Yeah, I think um, there's this is one where you could you could actually get like I could get in danger of almost breaking up friendships in this sense. But that was mm -hmm. uh, during the brace ruling. There seemed to be kind of two different camps, right? There was the there there was the um, Nah, I won't. I probably shouldn't say it online, but there were the the comply and non-comply groups, right? Like, yeah. oh, you know, it's whatever. And and quite frankly, you know, it, it's funny too because the people in the 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 non-comply camp mostly didn't care if other people complied with the brace ruling. That's they, not what I saw. They mo well, no, you do, you do you, right? You yeah. do you. However, what they had a big issue with, and there are you and I talked about this before because it was like you know the influencer telling you not to the, the influencer saying just put a stock on it when he's got an yeah. SOT and he's got <laughs> you know he's got a half a million dollar insurance program just for yeah. his guns and you're like okay man you know like it's not the, the we're, we're not same same here not the same <laughs> not the yeah. same here right so there's no the, the risk for you is not the risk for me right, right. however and however the 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 issue that i think we we took with people or that uh, i think the issue that would be taken with people is that if you complied but expected to be treated with the same tour de force as somebody who didn't comply you know what i mean that's the issue it's yeah. not it, it wasn't like for some people it might have been well we we all need to just not comply together which i mean ultimately that's what happened Right. Um, we won the, you know, that the, it's been winning in court. And I, and I, I, to be clear, I fully expect there to be another ruling identical. Yeah. In the near future. So, <clears> like, <throat> if you sell guns that have braces on them or you engage in that market, really, I'm, I would suggest strap in because the current 
modus operandi is to fire the the, uh, the 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 change now and then let it work its way in the court and how long did it take a year and some change yeah so you know what i mean that's that's kind of this the current the current tactic is infringe now ask questions later yeah let the court so, sort it out later you know and this uh even on the police officer side like geez dude yeah so here's the thing too man I don't, I, I, this is, this is fairly heavily contextual, right? So the timing of this all mattered. The timing of your, the faltering of your values mattered. I don't care if someone has a suppressor at all. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that's fine. Like you have another tool in the toolbox. Good for you, man. But at that moment where they're actively trying to take our rights away and you mm -hmm. acquiesce, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. Guys were getting it mixed up thinking that I'm just shitting on you because you have a suppressor. I'm like, it has nothing to do with the suppressor. You're missing the fucking point. I, was mm. like, I gave you the context in which it is shameful for you to fucking acquiesce to the, the ATF. Mm -hmm. You let them dangle a carrot in front of you while they're simultaneously trying to take away your rights. Mm -hmm. Make that make sense in your mind. Like you have to draw parallels to things like same thing for COVID, right? Everybody's, oh, I'm not doing it. Ah. And then all of a sudden they put the pressure on your job. They put the pressure on, on, on your, on your benefits your and then you saw dudes and you start, yes, it start your ability to travel. And then all of a sudden people start buckling at the knees. And I'm like, I was like, okay, so what, so what's happening here? Cause you're saying your values are here, but you're, you're performing down here as far as your values are concerned. Like you're 0 for two right now. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. I'm like, that's the parallel I'm drawing between the values portion here, because you're saying you're a solid fucking dude, but I ain't seen it yet. But you're, no, I've seen I've seen evidence to the opposite. Exactly. You know what I mean. And and I think you look at like you know special operations and you look at selection processes and what they're supposed to be, whether or not they function this way, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not going to be able to speak to in this Shit sense. Floats. <laughs> but like, if you the purpose of a of a selection is supposed to be able to pressure the guys that are trying to try out to see who cracks under pressure that's what they're trying to find out they don't care if you they don't care how many push-ups you can do you know it's like and this is the thing about like the shooting thing the being able to shoot right and this is almost it's like the perpetual argument of the internet like i can shoot better than you it's like cool i i can i can kill better than you we're done yeah, yeah exactly you know I mean? like yeah, yes yes I, I i fully understand that yes the world we can play this game of who can shoot better than who that's not the point like on a competition, you win, man. I, I give it. I give you credit. I you win, but um, but you're expecting me to say that just because you can pull the trigger fast and shoot well, which is a good skill to have, and you're fantastic at it, doesn't make you a warrior. It doesn't make you a fighting man. And then, yep. but that's okay. You just don't say that you are. Stop lying to yourself. Yep. So I want what I want. What's best for you? Stop lying to yourself. And here's the thing, man. I, I'm okay. People will have think I am like some just some dude that's just out here judging people. I embrace people. Now, granted, I also compartmentalize like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I see who you who you, who you are for who you are, mm -hmm. you're only gonna get so close to me. Yes. But I'm still going to embrace you. Like that's just what. Like I'm a nice dude. I'm like, hey, man, come in, dude. But if I see something suspect, I'm only gonna let you get here. Yes. Um. Yes. So. If I'm like, if you're not solid or if those aren't your values, I'm not here to I, like, I am going to judge you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to get that fucked up. I'm absolutely going to judge you silently, <laughs> but I'm not going to treat you any differently as a result of yes. your, uh, of your values. Like that is what it is, bro. I'm like, I can respect you because at least you're being honest. Yeah. That's so we, the need, problem. we need to go back a little bit though. We need to back up because you said, so the issue that's going on that I've seen and I've seen said a couple times and I, I, I've generally ignored it on the internet, but I, I did hear, I did hear it a little bit at SHOT Show was this idea that if you buy Hall of Sun, you are, you are performing the action of field testing their optics equipment for the optics equipment for the Chinese Communist Party and the People's mm -hmm. Liberation Army. And yep. so you are functioning in a sense as a traitor, um, air quotes, as a traitor because you are supporting the enemy. Um, well, one, that's not a traitor. A traitor is somebody who betrays his com con country. And you're not doing, this is inadversion. It, 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 the best thing that you could say as an accusation is you're just not that smart. But it doesn't mean that just because someone has a... Uh, you, someone has a Holocene, it doesn't mean that they're actively supporting the CCP. 
Right. You know, and that's and that's also kind of rich. <laughs> you know, it's or, just or there's the secret third option of they don't fucking care. They don't. Yeah. Well, that there, there's no part of them that's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about what impact this has anywhere else. This is what I'm buying. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is I think if you were like maybe, say, testing nuclear warheads that were funding the Chinese Communist Party and supporting them, their their research on the use of nuclear warheads, then maybe I'd have a lot larger of a problem with it. But like so the U.S. government, <laughs> but, 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 but 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 like I have what is Hollis? What are Hollis on optics known for? What is their what is their primary selling component? They're pretty damn good for how much they charge. You know what I mean? They're they they have a fairly decent um, recharge refresh rate. The glass yeah. is fairly clear. The housings are fairly robust. They come in like nine hundred different varieties. Them and Sig Sauer need to fight off on who has more SKUs. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And then and like so they they've got all these things going on for them. But it's not like you know you put a Hollison on and it's like oh I put a little red dot on my handgun and now I can see for three miles. Yeah, you know, it's, they're not really they're not really testing it. They're just does it break at the bank exactly. or on your gun? So. Yeah, I, I think I I won't say that the industry is pushing this because that's some conspiratorial stuff. I don't have really any any evidence for yet, but pushing them out of the market would be the way to go because you know what happens when you have a lower priced, just just as good. I don't even want to use that, but something yeah. that's comparable um now that value wise and also in um in the way it works essentially it means you have to be competitive at some point yes yes and that's what i think the companies don't like they're like oh hollow sun ccp and it's like well that's nice but yeah you want to be able to sell optics like i have a, i run a trigicon sro and i also do have a fucking house on one of my other guns mm -hmm. but i mainly run my fucking sro um, and I'll, SRO costs like 600 fucking bucks and I'm expensive and all of a sudden for like 250. It's like, Whoa, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. No, I mean, it, it's it, like now you can't fucking, over, like you're feeling the pressure of not being able to continuously overcharge to infinity and beyond. Um, and you know, as the years go on, when you have optics that have j way more competitive prices, it means they're going to have to drive down their prices at some point. It's the same thing that was happening with, f with fucking nods for a while. I, I, for the first time, saw, like, legitimate, like, G, I don't know if they were Gen 3 tubes, but it might have been Gen 2, but fucking duels for um, six grand. I was like, okay. huh, huh, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, you can get, I mean, you've been able to get photon, to, dual tube photonis in a, in, a, in a ruggedized housing for 6,000 for uh, at least four years now, three, 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 four years now. Yeah. Yeah, no, there. But the cost of nods is going down. It's just it not. Is. It's not dra dramatically. They're, they're, they ha are, they're having to be competitive, and it's that's what mm -hmm. they don't realize. That's what's also driving the price down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Now, now there is something worth considering, though, too, and that would be, um, how, how does how do American companies deal with the the um, stolen property issue, right? So like, and, and, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to speak from personal experience right now. I'm working with a company. I've made it something that I would call an invention. Uh, it's not really, but I'm working on bringing a product to market with another company. And because of NDAs and right speaking, I, sh I can't talk too much about it. But yeah. it's one of those items where it is not necessarily a legitimate concern, but it kind of is a legitimate concern that as soon as it hits the market, like why we have to keep it under wraps, as soon as it hits the market, there's going to be a Chinese copy. If it if it takes one thousand percent, there's going to be a Chinese copy within a month. You know what I mean? Yep. If, if 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 I get the if I get my golden rainbow, which sounds really weird, if I get my golden my you know my, whatever, if this turns out, I'm trying to golden, like, golden shower, gold yeah, the golden like a shower. Oh no, <laughs> but. Uh, if this turns out, you know what I mean? Like if it turns to be a, and I, and I have reason to believe that it will be a successful product because I'm, you know, I have my, I'm biased, but if it does, I'm not, I'm thinking, how am I going to have to contend with, uh, knockoff companies, you know, knockoff yeah. brands. And it's like, you, ultimately you're not, I'm not going to be able to, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to do certain things. So now, yeah. however, if somebody in America, right, let's just say, you know, I company just some company looks at it and immediately just takes it and makes their own version of it, right? Yeah. Um, I can I and 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 I can I can in good faith 
recognize or believe that they I, I can in good faith discern that they saw my product said we can make it cheaper Better. Yeah. or whatever we can make money off of it because you're one person we're a massive corporation or whatever and then they stole it then i could say yeah you know these people are douchebags yeah um that they stole property that's that's not a that's not cool man <clears throat> and here and here's the thing about you know china in general right it's always been that way yes china for the longest time throughout history especially on the military side has jacked almost every single major weapons design and recreated it in China. It's always been that way. They did it with the Dishka. They did it with the AK-47. They've done it with literally every single major military piece of equipment. And they have remade it. And, and they just slap type insert number on, on the product. And it's like, oh, they made it again. It's like, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, it's always been that way. China yeah. is not good at innovation. They are, they are kings at copying though. Yeah. We still, I mean, we stole nukes from the Germans. So, oops. <laughs> Like they didn't have it first, but we definitely stole nukes from the Germans. We told we, yeah. stole, we stole their minds, right? Oh, um, wait, literally. <laughs> whoa. It's whoa. A <laughs> it's a brain in the back. Brought back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if if you see like if you see flashing lights, uh um, yeah, and, right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's a reason why this isn't the live stream. So you can't like <laughs> what what is the word that people do nowadays? But uh yeah, here's 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 an ad for the April 2024 release. I'm not suicidal. There you go. That's yeah, the ad. Yeah, there we go. I, I am I'll, not going to kill myself. <laughs> I am I am going. Yes, exactly. I'm going to send it. Uh, I will have to send it to you in a little bit because it's just great. Um, but no, okay. So the issue the issue at hand. Let's go back into. Let's go. Let's. I still want to focus on it because I think there's a, a good di dynamic here that has to be f played out a little bit further, and that is so. Like, you got these people who complain about Holosun. First of all, yeah. what is it? Is it just a virtue signal? Like, is it really just a virtue signal? Because, um, what cell phone do you have? What car do you drive? What do you? Where? Where? Do, where? Where are your dishes made? You know what I mean? Like little things like that. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't take steps to reduce the influence and the infrastructure of Chinese. Sure. I completely agree with you. Yeah, does it cost more to buy American or buy whatever would be American or whatever Western products? Yes, yes, it absolutely does. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we know why. But like, so, so we get, it, I think this is where we get very close to cultural nihilism. It's that, mm. what can you do about it? Your shoes are made in a sweatshop. Your phones are made in a building where they have to put suicide nets on so that people don't kill themselves. You know what I mean? Like, the, we're, we're dealing with a problem that's so big, and I think the answer is decentralization. Stop complaining about world-level problems and pay attention to what's going on in your own damn backyard. Mr. Biden. Couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. So it's, like I said, you're not going to un-China the United States. It's not, it's not possible, especially not in our lifetime. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it's like, well, do you do you knowingly do it still? It's like, well, doing it unknowingly and doing it knowingly are going to have the exact same result. It's going to end up mm. in your fucking house. Um, I'm not pardoning people because of it. I'm just saying maybe it doesn't have the same level of effect on people that it has on you emotionally. Um, <clears throat> you sound like you're about to add to that. Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree that it's going to happen eventually. Like, I don't I don't know if I I think that's a little too dark. It's too nihilistic. It's like. Oh, you're never going to get away from it anyway. So just let it happen. Like, no, yeah. So, no, 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 no. So, our, so, our, so here's the thing. I'm, I, I don't consider myself a cynic. Some other people do. Sure. I, I'm a firm believer that it takes pretty large level events for anything to really change. Right. So anything short of a cataclysm at this point to completely sever the way we do business, even if it's underneath the, underneath the table, it's still happening right mm -hmm. so i do not think that's going to stop i don't think that's me being nihilistic i know somebody's gonna be like oh you're just being you're being pessimistic and not I'm, i was like no i'm actually being a realist i don't have any emotion behind this i just don't see it happening personally not to say i'm not open to being completely wrong about that situation i'm always open to being wrong do i see that happening there's a symbiotic relationship between the us and china china is working to a point where they can exist without us that is why they have been moving through the world like a goddamn parasite. They've been in Africa since like the 60s, purging their, their shit, 
pretty much making Africa buy everything on credit so they can take it back in the event that they don't toe the line. What happened when we left Afghanistan? China swooped right in right after we fucking left, mm -hmm. right? So they're, they're moving around like a parasite around the world. They're buying land in the U.S. So they're trying to, I think they're trying to get to a point now because they can't survive financially on their own right now. I don't believe they can. Now, granted, now we're getting into giant geopolitics stuff, and this is just little old me. I don't have any formal education in geopolitics. But I, from what I've seen, right, and I'm not even going to call this an educated fucking opinion at this point. This is just an opinion. Um, I think they're moving until they can get to a point where they can exist without us. And then they, if they can cut ties on their own, I can see that becoming an issue in the future. And that's the only time I think it would cease. So there, here's a goofy way of, I think, how, I, I think of how I've seen it play out in recent history. And bear with me as I make my pathway there. When I went to Ukraine, it's very obvious that the American people don't believe in their own ideas. They don't like like uh, in if you look at Afghanistan, why what what happened to Afghanistan? Like a shameful child who got caught stealing, we basically said nothing happened, and we turned around and we like, hey, we when when like this is the the collapse of Afghanistan, and what ended up happening there? The Taliban believed in their idea. They actually believed in being a country. Or, or, or a government or whatever it is, right? And America, the West, essentially just stopped believing in whatever they were doing and, like, changed the channel. That's kind of what happened. And it was very odd. It's very odd in the sense of, as I've traveled around the world and I've seen different things, China actually is a serious country. They mm -hmm. think of them as now. Are they as are they as serious? Are is they are they as capable as they as they are made out to be? I don't really know. I don't really have that answer completely. You know, are they are they a serious threat? Yes, they're a serious threat. But you want to know what you, you want to know why they're a serious threat? Because people are too afraid to give a damn about their own country. They're like, oh, it's got to be somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's China's fault. It's China's fault that what yeah okay then what they believe in what they're doing the chinese government believes in their empire the american empire cannot choose is is perpetually torn between the emotional shame of being a conservative and the radical cult-like self-worship that is the american left it it doesn't it's like it's 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 it on the one hand you have this I don't want to I don't want people to think that I actually believe something because then I'll be held to a standard. And then and, and, and on the other option is a rabid flag, flag like person with a, a cat of nine tails whipping themselves and then using that pain to motivate them to want to swing it at you. And you're like, bro, you're the kid putting the stick in the spokes. The meme works, you know. <laughs> and so, but whereas China's just kind of like, yeah, we're going to go do the thing. Like, uh, hey, do you want to, hey, look, there's, there's, we need, uh, we need more batteries. We need more power for our batteries. They're buying batteries. Where do we get lithium? Oh, yeah, there's this giant mine in this co country. Well, they're, they're a sovereign country. Okay, offer them a deal and then steal it from them. And they're like, oh, that's a good idea. It's not a, it's not a moral idea. And I'm not making a might makes right argument, but the Taliban believed in their idea. The Chinese Communist Party believes in their conquest. The American Empire does not believe in itself right. at all. It's just the individual greed of individual men. Mm. I'm sorry for. I, I hope I didn't completely derail the whole thought. You know, I, I, no, I, you, well, I, I'm trying to remember what the hell I was saying too. <laughs> That's mainly because of my because very terrible memory. It happens. TBI is a hell of a drug. Yeah, so, dude. <laughs> so it goes back to the Holosun thing, right? Like, uh -huh. be, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Would, would, I mean, you, would you rather have people be, would you, would you, what would you rather have? And then and this, this alternative is not absolute. Would you rather have a whole bunch of people not getting better at shooting because everything that they think is related to China, they just don't touch. And so they spend their hours not dry firing, not practicing, not preparing, not spent training with their friends, seek you being the garage, whatever you want to use as a definition, right? <laughs> it, would you rather have them like 
searching out which part of everything comes from which country or would you rather have people figuring out how to like shoot and pay attention and vote in their right. local politics and, and, and get on a, a city council and run for mayor Th that that helps small yep. town politics goes a very long way a hundred percent and mm. that does not get talked about at all <laughs> so there are I see, I've been more apt to see people say voting doesn't matter in any capacity. I've seen that all over the place. Brain dead take, in my opinion. Um, I was like, you never tried. You never even tried to take power back in your own town. And you're saying, oh, that's nihilism. That's real nihilism, in my opinion. That's yeah. you saying, I'm not even going to bother putting up a fucking fight. I'm not even going to try and take power back in my town. I'm not going to try and make any connections. Half these people don't leave their fucking houses, bro. Yeah, I understand it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's it, that's real nihilism, in my opinion, because you're yeah. not even you're not even attempting to do something to fix the problem. You're just saying, ah, we're done." Yeah. Uh, did you? Um, let's see. Boy Scouts have ranks. You have like Life Scout, Eagle Scout, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't remember the other ones really. I don't. But it's uh, it's called being per. It's like it's it's being perpetually a level one. Mm. That's what it is. Like you, you never, you're never gonna like, and like, it's, it, I think it's, I think it's an interesting, I think not an interesting problem. I think it's an important problem. If you believe, if your, if your argument is that we should never vote, it doesn't make sense. Then what you're telling me is that, that unless you're giving me an alternative, how do you participate in your body politic in your com in your country? I don't. Okay, then when other people do, you will not be consulted. Yeah, that's it. Like. Okay, you won't be consulted. Yeah, your your opinion won't be taken seriously about <clears throat> political things. You know. Yeah, and I've definitely had my times in the past, dude. I have there. I have had years where I just straight up didn't vote because I didn't like either candidate. Or and then people were like, "Oh, you should have just voted for this." Is the is the something of two evils? Yeah, whatever, man. It is what it is. Um, some people are gonna think that's a brain dead take fuck you. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Um, I, I didn't see anything in good conscience that I could vote for because I actually looked at policies. Um, sure. Most people fucking didn't. There was a popularity contest. So I'm like, eh, no, I'm good. Um, and, but outside of that, man, just, I, I think my whole thing online for the most part, outside of teaching people entry, most of the time for free, sometimes I get paid to do it is getting people to a point where introspection can come naturally sure because i, I i'm going to continuously ask the hard questions to see where you're coming up and then we'll throw it's kind of like um there, there's a difference between like teaching coaching and then mentoring right okay um give me an example i'm going to ask you to define those three then sure sure so let me see. Uh, forgive me if I mess this up. So teaching is obviously you're kind of you're kind of regurgitating and teaching someone the method of doing something. Mm -hmm. um, coaching is. I'm going to skip coaching for right now, but mentoring is essentially you're leading them down the path to ask the questions to solve the problems themselves. Sure. So you're not I'm not leading you to the water. I'm giving you questions to make you arrive to those conclusions on your own. Yeah. It's a it, it's 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 a it's not necessarily a hierarchy, but it does have it's things not. lead. To, but thing, but they're but they're different forms of things. Like so, for example, right. you teach, you teach skills, coach mm. tactics, right. and mentor theology, or, mm. or strategy, or worldview, or or you know what I mean. So like, it it, it, it they 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 all approach it a different way. If I'm going to teach somebody how to reload a pistol, I'm not mentoring them in reloading. Right. You know, I'm and I'm not coaching them in reloading. I might, as a coach in the realm of competition shooting, say, your draw is slow. You need to practice the skill of drawing. Let me teach right. you how to do it. Whereas coaching is more of a tactic level thing. And then on that, because skills or skills combined become techniques, techniques combined become tactics, tactics combined become strategy. Strategy, strategy yep. combined is informed by something. So a theology, a worldview, I, a, a worldview informs a tactic. Sorry, a worldview informs a strategy, which informs a tactic, which informs a technique, which is a combination of skills. Mm. Yeah, beautiful put. Beautiful put. 
Um, hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> you called me out on the spot. I was like, oh shit, now I have to remember this thing. But yeah. Um, damn, where was I going with that, dude? Before you fucking because you're we're talking about like political nihilism, and we're talking about political nihilism, and then you brought it up how you're an instructor on covert entry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there is a uh, getting people to ask the important questions arrive to the i don't want to say the right because right right is subjective i guess right get them to arrive to a logical conclusion mm -hmm. so i think that's lacking um there is no introspection and that's what i've seen rampantly and, it, and you'll see it in very various different ways you'll see it where they'll hyper fixate on something they didn't like in the conversation therefore they discard the rest of the conversation Sure. Because they don't want to deal with the message itself. They'd rather hyperfixate on something, a part of the message that they didn't like. So therefore, mm -hmm. I didn't like this part. Therefore, I hyperfix on it, which means I missed the message altogether. I'm seeing that literally in my comment section right now. Okay. Um. So like guys are like, oh, so does this mean I don't get a suppressor? I was like, brother in Christ, it has nothing to do with the fucking suppressor. Get the suppressor. <laughs> like you're, you're yeah. missing the message. The message is consistency. You're lacking it. What I'm saying is have your ducks in a row. If you're saying your values matter here, make sure they also matter here. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about the suppressor. Get the suppressor. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's super weird that they're, they're focusing on the vehicle of the message versus the message itself. Now I have the context to why we're talking about suppressors to begin with, but I don't know. Yeah. I, we didn't really bring it up too much because it was, we were talking a little bit about the brace ruling, yeah. uh, but it, it reminds me of a certain, so like, have you ever read Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged? It's got a bunch of I've people. I've read it, but I've never actually read it. Okay. So it's one of those books that, you, like, I don't care what you think about the book at all in the sense of, I don't care about what you think about the book as in, it's a bestseller. And it's a bestseller for a reason. Like, it's one of those books that is for, is going to go down in history as one of the greater books that has ever been written. Does that, do, does, does that mean that, and that's, that's on sales and success alone. Mm -hmm. which also I will recognize is a frustrating argument because when I was a kid, somebody told me that your little, your little hipster band that no one's ever heard about is never going to be oh. as, you know, like is not, uh, is not the best musician ever <laughs> really look who sells more albums. And I didn't think that was a very convincing argument, but there's, right. a certain, there's a certain reality to it. Like, Hey man, if he's so good, why does nobody know about, about their music? Yeah. And, they're like, and there's nothing you can do about it, it. Because their marketing system is terrible. No, because <laughs> self promotion isn't working. You know what? I, I get it. It's convoluted. But this is what I, I, I hear this. I hear people do say this all, often. I don't know, oftentimes it comes from the Christian camp. Is that well? Ayn Rand didn't like religion. She was a she was a objectivist, and she hated organized religion, and she hated the idea of God. And I was like, yes. That ha that comes up on three pages of a fourteen hundred page book. Is that the only thing you took from the book? Because it's got some really good ideas. It's got some really bad ideas. It's got some. It's got some really neat characters. It's got some poorly written or not poorly. It's got some like, eh. You know what I mean? But like, it's just such a weird thing to say. Oh, I I got I can't. It's not a good book. I couldn't read it because of the first three pages. Like, bro, what? <laughs> Well, yeah, it's just like, oh, okay. But well, I mean, you, then don't, then you're not a reading person. That's fine. Like it, it, there's a, there's an old saying. Um, and what is it? It was the mark of an intel, a truly intelligent person is be, is being able to entertain and entertain an idea without accepting it. Yes. So uh, that goes in line with that perfectly. It's like, man, you like, even if you don't like what's being said, you still read on, see if you can extrapolate anything from it that might be useful to you. Mm hmm even though you already kind of are don't really like what's going on here. It's like, we'll keep going. Yes. You may, you may feel completely different on page 60 versus on page three. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, so it, it's weird to see. And I, I hate to use like huge words, but cognitive dissonance does kind of fall in line with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it absolutely does. Mm -hmm. We've also so, been seeing the rise of like the NPC meme again. Yeah. Like, like yeah. People yeah. who don't have an internal monologue, which I don't know if I entirely believe it. I think they're just not being explained very well on what that is. Yeah. You know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I'm not convinced that it's true. I think it's a little bit more of like a, Oh, the current thing. Yeah. But, no. but on Ooh, top of that's, that, that's a really good point. I want to talk on that too. Like the NPC thing, the not having an internal monologue. Yeah. The, the thing that you just said, mm -hmm. 
And I don't think it's that. I think that one comes back down to values and character. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's that they don't have their own thoughts. I think they lack spine in a way that is absolutely catastrophic. Because it's telling that you don't have enough, you don't have enough confidence and faith in what you know to be right to speak on it and continue on that path. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't have any confidence in it, and you're absolutely going to get swayed and pushed like the waves with every new thing that comes in. Yeah, it's a very uncomfortable book. It can be a very uncomfortable book in the Old Testament to read, but read the book of Proverbs. And there, there are characters, sort of almost, almost like archetypes or types that are presented. Not archetypes in the Carl Jung, uh, Carl Popper, Carl Jung sense, whatever in the Jungian sense, but more like they have the mocker, the fool. You have the simple, right? And and these 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 types are not dis not all types are described encouragingly. And I think that there's something different to being, a, say, a mocker and a fool than not being smart. Like there's, and and, I, and it comes down to it. They're always referred to in a character reference. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the measure of their intellectual capacity. It's that they are they are intellectually dishonest, and that reflects in their life. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's that that's really what we're dealing with here. Is that the whole the the idea like i don't the i don't think the npc thing i don't i don't know if it doesn't seem to stick now maybe i just can't comprehend it but maybe i'm just not comprehending it i mean that's that's entirely possibly true right and, but let's uh you know for for the context of those who are listening it's been somewhat trendy over the internet in the last couple of weeks rather this idea of having in it that there are people who don't have an internal monologue and an internal monologue is that voice inside your head that when you're reading something, you're, you're hearing yourself talk or when you're trying to figure out a problem, you're, you're thinking in words, I guess. But I think an internal monologue is in the joke. I think that's being made is that an internal monologue uh, people who don't lack an in, uh, are, do not have an internal monologue are basically robots they're programmed they don't make decisions the same way that you and i make decisions they just they're just action impulse action impulse and i i, I don't find it super convincing yeah I, I yeah i don't think that's the case either man i think uh, what we talked about earlier, man, I, I think it's just people don't have enough faith in their own beliefs mm -hmm. to stay on the path of their beliefs. I think that's literally it, man. That's when I see NPCs, it's just a bunch of people who either don't have enough information or they're too afraid of the backlash that comes from having your own opinion on a thing. Yeah, they, uh, I think I, oftentimes I think it comes out as, as they don't want to. Uh, that's, yeah. I, think that's the, I think that's the part that's maybe frightening is the right way of saying it. Hmm. But concerning is that like that you believe that you can exist in the world without the burden of existence and the burden right. of existence is making decisions and thinking. Yeah. And that's a, that's a scary idea that you can mm -hmm. exist in the world without the burden of existence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's really what I think it, it boils down to. Um, some people want to be seen and liked in a certain light and they don't want to do anything to disturb that. I am a, I, I, I won't say I'm a fan, but I respect people that can gladly and openly step outside that boundary. Like, so I know this is probably going to sure. It's gonna, I don't want us to re derail the conversation, but Lucas, uh, Lucas Bakken, man, mm -hmm. I would say he's probably a poster boy for that right now. Um, and he's just like, I don't like this thing. Like, I don't like this specifically for this reason. And it's like, and, but he's consistent though. It's like, it's super consistent across the board. I'm like, Dude, good for you, man. Like, and he catches heat for it every single time and he stays the path. I'm like, that's good. Mm -hmm. Do that thing. And granted, that could be, a, it could be a marketing ploy. Sure. It could be like, hey, I know my demographic and I'm going to continue on this path because these are the people I'm marketing to. Mm -hmm. Sure. It could be that. Or that could just be him. And he's like, this is what I believe in. And I'm going to stay on this path regardless of who's saying what. Yeah. That's respectable in my opinion. They say never meet your heroes, and uh, one of them is you might realize that they're humans just like you, and it's very yeah. it's, so. Hundred percent. You know, and and <clears throat> I don't heroize anyone. <laughs> I have I have that I is have, blown up in my face <laughs> early in life, so I, I I got that lesson real early. There are yeah, there are still people that <laughs> I, I look up to, um, <clears throat> but 
there are still people. I'm not. I have not completely given up. The, <laughs> well, so, so, some of them are fictional. <laughs> it's so. Is it just kidding? so they can't let me down. They uh, can't let me down. <laughs> oh uh, man. So yeah. <laughs> We had to uh, break rather quickly halfway through the conversation here, so uh, I'm glad to hear everything's well on your end. We'll leave it, we'll leave it in mystery at that point in time. But Marcus, <laughs> one of the things that I wanted to have you on the show, and one I wanted, what I wanted to talk to you about was I wanted you to tell, tell, talk, do the AAR, the after action review on this community event that you recently did. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, so February 10th, we gathered we. Uh, we went down to Florence, South Carolina. So we happened to know um, the SWAT team down there, really good dudes. Um, so they essentially let us have some free ran over uh, one of their properties. Uh, so we used that as the venue. Um, we pushed it out probably like two or three months prior, had about 60 to 70 people in attendance from all over the place. Um, and so my vision for this community day was to have instructors from all walks of life, right? So. Um, some people were teaching counter surveillance. Some people were teaching standard TCCC, um, it's like soft medics and stuff like that. Um, digital force protection, digital exploitation, uh, covert entry. Obviously, we taught that. Um, and then we had a couple of gear vendors and obviously we had some drone stuff there, too. So just people from like all across the pond to come in and teach people things that they can actually take back to the real communities and kind of pawn off those those skills so that they have a more capable community. Um, something as simple as digital force protection. My buddy Forrest teaches that. Um, most people don't know how to protect themselves online. They don't know what the signs are, if they're being, you know, scammed, spearfished, um, any of those things. So that's that class was a good start for people to figure out like, hey, this is how I protect myself and my family online. Um, so that we're not falling prey to scams, losing our information, our identities, uh, so on and so forth. So, and then he tied it in really well with like the larger picture. And it was like an attack on the the Navy at some point where they had essentially, I think it was a nation state, had gone up after quite a few high level or high ranking officers and just hit them with attack after attack online. Um, sending like death threats to their kids and saying like your dad's gonna die you, you know as soon as he deploys 250 people are gonna get wiped out like just stuff like that to ruin their families like mental you know their you know their their mental fortitude mm -hmm. right before they deploy so like that's that's a, that's pretty that's got some pretty devastating effects um so it's like well how are they able to do this in the first place like are you guys actually looking at what your digital exhaust looks like online you know what your what your footprint looks like and most people do not so that class was really good. That was one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting to have an entire day, like an entire full day of not one person saying anything about a rifle, a gun or anything like that. It was sure, just people sure. completely dedicated to learning other skills outside of shooting. Like it was funny that it wasn't even a conversation at any point in time. Um, so people were just in there and there's, these are people from all over the place. These are, these are people from the soft side of the military, conventional sides, regular civilians, cops, you name it. So it was really, really nice to finally see some movement. The thing I've been envisioning for this, uh, I, I use this very loosely, this community, um, is pushing past the gun because sure. quite sure. frankly, sure. even strategically, you, your guns don't really make that much of a difference. Um, so getting people to harden their, their local areas, their, you know, you know, their own homes, their, their, you know, their friends' homes up the street, um, is really where you're going to start enabling that capability in your community. You have to, you have to deal with the other stuff you deal with daily, not the things you may deal with once in your lifetime. Sure. Yeah. It, it, I think there's two, yeah, the, 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 the use of self-defense is an interesting problem because we say things like god or heaven forbid it ever happens but that heaven forbid is oftentimes baked in like poorly veiled sarcasm it's not even that <laughs> you know it's, it's sort of like have, like no i i don't i actually don't i i i'll be the first i'll i'll i'll, I'll say it first like if 
I, I wouldn't consider it a bad day if I had the opportunity or if I was put in a position where I had to defend my life. Like, it wouldn't just be a bad day. I think in some ways it would be a little bit more solid. But, but at the same time, I'm not delusional about the scale of what that might look like. I mean, people talk about it all the time. They're like, oh, you know, heaven forbid. But like, yet people deploy and go to war because they want to go to war. Right. Let's stop. Li let's just stop lying to ourselves because the our critics who probably are functioning on room temperature IQ with a morality, you know, of like a criminal <laughs> are like, oh, you 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 just want to kill people. Like, no, I don't just want to kill people. I want to destroy evil. So let's move on. But uh, sorry, that was my diatribe. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but so oh, I think I, I, I do. One of the things that I found inspiring about that, though, is uh, in some ways what you're doing, I think, is the cutting edge of what we need is, is a community. We I've, our entire lives that we've heard people talking about, oh, we should do something. And it's like, well, then volunteer. No, too much work. OK, you're not a part of it. Like, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, then, oh, you won't volunteer. Then, no, you're not a part of it. So, right. And yeah, it's, I, it's great, man. Yeah, it's it's super easy to to be the guy that's like, oh, yeah, I want to do X, Y and Z. And then it's like, well, it's another it's another thing altogether to say, hey, this is happening. Here's a hard date, a hard time. Mm -hmm. We have the, you know, the logistical support to do this thing. Um, and for the biggest part of this is it's not hidden behind a fucking paywall. Sure. So I I lit some asses on fire over the whole paywall thing, right? Because there's constantly people out here talking about, oh, we're doing this, we're building community, we're doing this, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. And I'm like, not really, man. I was like, you're you're but you're putting it behind a paywall. That's the very opposite of what community is. Sure. If you're looking to gain anything from this other than like, hey, I'm pushing this to these people because I want to see them succeed, I want to see them be more capable, um, and not get paid from it. That's that's the whole point of the community thing, right? It's why people have community gardens. It's why they do um, the giveaway groceries and stuff like that. They're not gaining anything from it. They're actually losing. They're losing time. They're losing um, supplies. We all the people that came there did not get paid. So like all these people came there, traveled from Georgia, from South Carolina, North Carolina, all over, knowing that they were going to lose gas money, hotel stays. And they did it because they believed in the vision that I had for this event. Good. That means more than people will ever fucking know is that there are people out there willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I expect that. to. I hope I hope that people will follow in your footsteps in that sense, like we see it more often. I, I, I hope so too. I've put, I've pushed people. I'm like, dude, please do it. And there's a guy, um, I think he goes by middle class minute man on, on IG. Um, but he started it up in Pennsylvania. I was like, good. Yes, good. please yeah. steal this idea. Make it catch on. I would love that. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think, it, I think it can be easily replicatable. So uh -huh. what we're, so let's make the assumption that somebody who's listening to this right now is getting ready to, that has, has made the moral or conscious decision to, um, figure out some way to set up their own start you know whether it's as small as some people that they know but you're looking at like a community event that is open enrollment i guess mm -hmm. without a uh without not hidden behind paywall for the purpose of bettering other people around them what are some lessons that you learned as far as structure material and execution so one of the things we probably ran into uh, early on was seating arrangements. So I would say between seating, figuring out how many people we could max each class out for. So we had to, obviously we had to stagger the time slots for the classes so everyone could make it to all for every single class. So we put on each class multiple times. Some people taught three times, some people taught two times, but it would always be offset so that two classes are being taught at the same time so people can rotate. And also so that the, the instructors can actually rotate and go to each other's classes. Mm. So because obviously we're there, we're there to learn just as much as everybody else is. Absolutely. So we, we wanted to make sure that each of us could also go and, you know, in, enjoy each other's classes. Um, so I would say seating was a big one because we I would say we reconned that site probably four or five months prior. And when we showed back up all the seats were gone so we we're like oh no like it was like the weekend prior and i was like "Fuck!" all right so we had to find 
a bunch of seats and you know luckily i know some people so we got a ton of seats um, um so that ended up being a non-issue mm -hmm. but um so yes we had that we had the timing of the classes which my wife handled beautifully she is she had a knack for that thing um as far as like the organization for like how classes are structured or how events are structured excuse me so she's the one that handled the actual timing of the classes she separated them she had the sign-in sheets for who's going to attend what classes um because yeah there were sign-in sheets there were waivers so she took care of all of that mm -hmm. um we obviously had to have the waivers because you know how that happens someone gets hurt doing something stupid and and then all of a sudden you catch yourself on that the, you know the bad end of litigation so yeah um, that is another subject that i think um uh, that we can get into in a minute for sure. So um, I would say as far as that, those subjects go, everything went pretty flawlessly. Um, so that really, it really couldn't have gone any better than it actually did. Uh, I would say the the only thing that we kind of took out of this moving forward was um, probably food. <laughs> so we had, we gave people yeah, yeah. lunch breaks, which was okay, but it's, you know, it's 70 people, you know, <laughs> going out to a small town and getting stuff. Um, so next time, if we did charge anything, it would literally just be to cover the food for everyone in attendance. So it'd be like $10 an attendee or something. So that way we can just get lunch in mass. People don't have to fly out to God knows where to get food. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be there's I, there's these uh, there's a, there's these these maxims that people use that uh, oftentimes are extremely contradictory. And I, I find them really frustrating. But one of them right now in the, is in this context is people only value what they pay for and it's not community if it's not free. It's like, mm. you know, I think these two things are intention because you're probably going to get two completely different groups of people. However, if right. I pay for something, I'm expecting something different than if I go, if I just volunteer. And right. I wonder, I, and again, I know you were talking about it earlier, but I, I wonder how, how the uh the method of attendance changed the mentality of the people participating oh i i know exactly where you're coming from with this one yeah um so for the next one right so we had quite a few people show we had people that deal weapons overseas we had guys that deal like in nods um we had ham radio guys people yep. that homestead like we had a whole plethora of people that were there that had different skill sets and businesses um and, you know, talking to the guy that, you know, distributes and sells, you know, night vision and almost immediately I winced and I was like, I don't want that here. <laughs> so it is, and that might be bad of me to, 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 to be that way. Um, but night vision, once again, brings a certain type of crowd. And I, I, I absolutely want nothing to do with that crowd. Okay. I don't want them there. I don't want them bringing something other than the, the intent of what the event's about. Okay. Um, and maybe that's kind of messed up of me and I'll, I'll fully own that because everyone should, whoever, I'm not going to stop them from coming, but at the same time, I don't want the gear tards and everything ran, running through here, you know, messing stuff up. Okay. And once again, I could be, I could be very messed up for how I think about these types of people. I think um, it's my, my general experience might be something kind of like, uh, what is it? Um, it's like the horseshoe theory of, uh. Uh, the horseshoe model of intelligence it's kind of like or, or the other one is you have like the bell curve and like the yeah. you know it's the bell curve and like the midwit in the middle is like i think i'm smart but then the, you got yeah. the dumb guy and the smart guy who have the same idea yeah like the, the 170 iq and the 15 iq guy have the exact same i believe the same thing but the midwit yeah. thinks he's smart yeah he's, you know it's like but he's got he, he's completely wrong i wonder if i wonder if gear tards are kind of like that you know what i mean like I wonder if that applies because the the people who like don't care at all about gear at all are you either lying or they're wrong but then the people who like only care about gear are on the low end of the spectrum and then the high end of the spectrum <laughs> is like knowing its place i guess That's yeah I, I i think so yeah and once again maybe i've just been like absolutely burned by like the type of shit i see on the internet Sure. And so I, I, I will fully take responsibility for that preconceived notion I have about nods owners. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm a nods owner, so I am too crazy. Right. But oh I don't think it's my fucking personality. It's oh, wild. It literally is my personality. I, 
I go to the grocery store with them on just so I can flex on the the lady who works on the, the on the pours. Yeah, I go I go to win the Wendy's parking lot at fucking twelve in the morning and make sure that everyone knows I'm better than them. I actually did put out a video of me going to <laughs> Wendy's wearing nods through the drive thru and the guy at the window was just like, What the fuck? And I was Sir, like, this is the Wendy's. <laughs> this is a Wendy's. Give me the nuggets. <laughs> but I mean, so, oh, you don't understand. This is a robbery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir, do you understand what is going on in this inter- in uh, this engagement? Yeah. I am not here to purchase the the food. I am here to rob your cash I'm here register. To rob you. Yeah. So, so like if that was up. the case, I'd be like, all right, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but... yeah. No, 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 I did it. it just, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I again, I, I, I will. I, there's, it's like, it's one of those arguments that is not like philosophically satisfying, but it's. Right. You know, it's like, because it was fun, nerd, like, that's why I did it. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to a Wendy's wearing nods yeah. because it was fun. Like, what am I going to do? Go up the mountain? I do, I do that all the time. So yeah. let's do something different. But at the same time, yeah, it, I, I, I'm a little jaded on that. Yeah. Maybe personally jaded on the, uh, oh, can't, can't make nods your personality. Like, what else do I don't have anything else, man. I don't have anything else. <laughs> <laughs> like right here, right next to me is a giant library of like all of these different books and 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 quite frankly no one cares like they yeah don't. They're like oh have you read dostoyevsky i'm like yeah crime and punishment raskolnikov is literally me and i don't like it <laughs> yeah man so. so it's once again uh i might take that guy up on it and i this sure. is i i planned on making this either a biannual ordeal or annual ordeal and gotcha. each time there will be different people so we okay. have a guy a local farmer up here is a former sf guy um that's going to come and teach some some homesteading type stuff at the next one um the emergency expert chris we're going to try and get him up there as well to teach some like emergency management type stuff um, so we might have some cool guy stuff up there just to kind of balance it out with the information and stuff um, so might have the nods guy and like the ham radio guy. We'll probably gotcha. have those two up there or so we, and there's a ton of space. We have so much space. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we can probably run something like six to seven classes that entire day versus the five we did prior to, yeah. um, right. Why do I still have the impression like it's burned into my head that we're at coal range, which is a ranger thing, but it, and everyone's just sitting in the bleachers learning about how to do like hand and arm signals. This is like <laughs> this is the image that I have in my head is like military aluminum ble- bleachers, you know, in, and and everyone's just sitting there like trying not to fall asleep, but they're actually having a good time instead. And, and yeah, uh, this is this is like the mental image, even though you're talking about chairs and stuff. So yeah, it's. It's, it's going to be interesting, man. Um, but I, the, what I wanted to start moving towards is less classroom and more practicality. So we sure. have we have the space, we have the permission to go out and actually do certain exercises in certain parts of the city. Like surveillance and counter surveillance? Exactly. Exactly right. like that. So if you're going to do something like, you know, um, a rabbit in the eye type uh, exercise, then that's something we can probably do um i'm not i'm not familiar with that that experience. um so it's essentially like how how a target's you know tailed right oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're tailing obviously if you have one or uh, mo- the best would be two vehicles or if you have more i don't know how that would work out so you can but, cycle them so you can cycle them so that way you're not following mm-hmm. every you're not following that same car past more than you know three or four turns right um so if someone's running an sdr and you they don't pick you up so mm-hmm. um so outside of that, if there are other abandoned buildings, I would like to string those all together at some point and just start, so that's what capability is, right? You take multiple skill sets, you start stringing them together, and then you that's that's what the end product is, is you being able to display multiple disciplines at the same time. Sure. Um, for Mike Shelby, he's another guy I wanted to have come up there. And maybe I'll just give him his his own type of community day where it's just like every that whole day is just like him doing his thing. Mm-hmm. But he's the guy that wrote the Area Intelligence Handbook, so he's yep. a former thirty five series guy, um, so Intel guy, contractor, um, and he runs Gray's. I think it's Gray Zone Warlord. Yeah, that's his Instagram. I'm familiar with him. He's got, he also has like the Forward Observer. Yeah, Forward Observer, Gray Zone activity. Um, so. And I want it to be like a what's that? Oh no, like and this is it's not really like 
I know I know a guy who's a former Marine Corps intelligence officer of like the high end, not just like you know an O O two or something. Mm-hmm. Who um who li- who who ke- who who uses Mike Shelby's information? Oh wow! For, like like he's he's he like I mean, and this is a guy I know personally, but it was just it was really neat to see that validation, particularly yeah, for because. Sure. I knew this guy. I knew this guy who was solid. Like I had, he had good rapport with me. And then he, lit, like, brought. In, he didn't introduce me to Mike Shelby, but he was like, "Yeah, this this guy's legit." Like I know there's a lot of people who like to make being Intel their like identity, kind of like the nods thing. Like, oh, <laughs> I, like I'm in the know. And it's like, yeah, you, you, you no, you're not. You know, it's, <laughs> like, it's it's like you're halfway between like the news and Tim Pool and me. And like I've, I've and on, on, oddly, oddly enough, I've been guilty of that too. So. Yeah. Um, so what I, I, I know one thing I was har- harping on pretty hard uh, last year was doing your area study, right? And mm-hmm. that I got that. I obviously got that from him. And so I think one of the biggest problems that we run into, and once again, I use the word community very loosely, but as an online group of people who mutually want to see each other succeed in, in, in a lot of facets, um, is that if you're not doing it with people, it's really hard for people, especially that are just starting off to stay consistent and actually do the thing and expand on it. Sure. And really make it their own. Right. It, people just, they're not feeling like there's some type of real connection to it. And that connection most of the time comes through other people, not so much the task at hand. Sure. What is it? So, what, do you, what is it? What do you, what is you, what is it that you think is getting in the way of people just doing this like of their own? Like what, what did you have to do to what, what is it that clicked in you that you were like, Oh, you know what? I'm just going to make one. I'm going to make my own volunteer day. Um, part, part of it was being sick of the status quo. Okay. That was part, that was a large part of it. it I, it's going online, seeing people brag and boast about doing literally next to fucking nothing. And you're like, you know what? this is the war path we're going to do this correctly and we're going to show what the standards should look like so that it can gotcha. be it can be emulated um like i want to see people see that's the pretty much the entire point of my fucking page outside of posting you know lock picking and bypass stuff every now and then um a lot of it is getting people to question where they are in life right now and and kind of lead them to the answer the, the right questions to ask themselves to get them to the right answer sure so you're not yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the existential philosophers would hate you. Um, sh- sure. <laughs> but I think it's what's needed right now because I think we have a bunch of people running around essentially in a in a life crisis that they can't identify yet. Okay. Do you th- so you I right, let's if you don't mind, can we let like turn turn the window a little bit? Sure. Um turn the window a little bit to uh this um i want to hit on that specific concept that you were talking about um on wanting to like the, the wow i'm not even i'm even stumbling through my words on this one from being interrupted <laughs> uh the issue i like i i've been i've been focusing on this a bit lately i'm not the only one and i think there's this if you if you were to do like a large language model analysis of a series of culturally pri- like cent- cent- front and center cultural issues in the United States cultural conversations you would be able to pick up an under well, an underground sense of dread and uh what might you call might what some people might call a bit of an identity crisis like i don't i think and i've tried to describe it a little bit as like i, I believe america's undergoing a series of moral injuries it's being subjected to a series of moral injuries, and this is going to be before you completely tinfoil hat. I think that the people who are existing within government of our country are either wittingly or unwittingly forcing the American people into a process of subjugation and moral injury, and they're doing it in ways like the people who are actually participating in trafficking women's bodies for sexual, for for whatever, are also are also the same people who are lecturing people about what's not happening at the border. I think the I think I think you have a correlation here. In other words, the same people who would get on a plane and fly to Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein's island are the exact same people that are lecturing the United States that there isn't a migrant crisis or whatever. Right. While they're also while they're while they are simultaneously profiting from 
the slavery that they're in that they, 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 they are simultaneously profiting from enslaving people like what is happening at Tyson Foods and that the and the and the issue that the United States the Americans are dealing uh, that American citizens are dealing with is that they see it their conscience reels from it but they are being condemned for seeing what is actually taking place and so another example of that and how that manifests i think within the gun culture is we have all of this capability we have all of this capability we have this we have all this intent we have all of the these the, this like this we have this pressure that is building within the system that we have no idea where to send it no idea where to go and some of it is internal like it's the existential crisis in a loose philosophical phrase that is, I have this AR-15 or I have this SR-25, but I'm never going to go do a Navy SEAL thing. I am never going to go on a night raid again. I am never going to do any of these things. And so the, you get this kind of mass formation psychosis is not the right word, but you get this mass depression of like, what for? And that's why I think you're, that's, that, that's, what, that's why I wanted to talk to you about your community day. Is mm. that I, I, think, I think you're, I, wittingly or unwittingly, and I don't mean to mean that in a negative way, I think that you're, you're queuing in on something that is so much deeper than skill sets. But the, uh, the, the, the mutual participation in this community event is the pathway to achieving it. And that sounds so Jordan Peterson philosophy, <laughs> big brain bullshit. But unfortunately, that's exactly what it is. Uh, or not unfortunately, that's, that's what I think is going on. And so what is it that you, you see when you're talking about this, like, almost like this masturbatory experience of, like, you know, guns, civil war, nah, night vision people. And what do you think is a solution, like, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in almost in, like, a meaningful sense, not just you're dumb, go to the gym thing? Um. I'm, I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything anyone can tell them mm. to get them off of that train. Um, I know that sounds really, <laughs> that sounds really downtrodden, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the issue is, is the people that are doing it more than likely have never had that buy-in in real life. And so they're using these tools and equipment as their way of gaining that buy-in. And even though they're never going to actually use it. So sure. get, getting people to let go of the actual purchase and what it means to them and to understand where the stuff is in the packing order of importance of skills that need to be learned and how to employ them and what you want the end result to look like. Yes. So it's, it's really hard to get people to let go of their purchases because they put, you know, they, they work, you know, really hard to get the stuff that they want for, for what reason is what, is what we're fighting against. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I completely am familiar with it. Uh, there's, a, there, there's no, it's happened to me multiple times where somebody will come to me, approach me as if I'm an expert on guns, and they'll ask me my opinion about a, buying a gun for self-defense. Mm. Only to find out that they have already made the purchase and they're just looking for me to validate their decision. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, well, then why did you ask me? Because that's <laughs> insulting. Yeah. So, and, now, and so, like, now if you want advice on guns, I, ch I charge for it because I yeah. don't want someone to be like, oh, did my, is my 10 millimeter handgun a, a, a good gun for home defense? Absolutely not. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, but, like, if you want to make it your identity, go ahead, man. You know, like, right. So, I, I, that's the hardest part to, far, to fight against right now. Sure. And getting them to that level of understanding, like, all right, man, it's a lot less about your gun. Like, don't get me wrong. It's like, I don't want you to recoil against me for saying your, your purchase isn't important. Your purchase is important in its own right. It's just not usable right now. Sure, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not usable in what we're trying to do. And you have to get them to see like 10,000 foot view of what needs to happen and then make them understand in correlation to that where their gun lies on that scale. Sure, sure, sure. It's kind of it's the it's the issue where like it's um it's the issue of like the the Lucas Bodkin kind of thing where you got a guy who can shoot really good but uh, like and I and actually I don't want to level this directly at Lucas Bodkin. I actually want to level it more at like that kind of this there's this um not community but there's this like weird obsession about s people being able to shoot and then comparing somebody who can shoot well 
to somebody who like knows how to do a night raid and has done like 80 of them yes you know what i mean and you yep. and, the, and where i see this happen in like the infighting is like the gbrs dudes versus the night or the the t lucas bodkin dudes like yeah. the it's it's like the two little camps of people are fighting each other and the reality is like what, what's what's the point of the argument you know I, what i mean i've dealt with that too the, actually fairly recently um mm -hmm. So I shot the all army small mar, small arms mark uh, marksmanship comp about two weeks ago. Oh, posted a video. For, it, uh, I didn't shoot as well as I wanted to shoot this year, and that's that's is what it is. Um, but there, you know, the competition shooters come out and they start flexing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, like I know I could run that and fucking you know." Da, da, da. I'm like, "Well, that's that's perfectly fine, man." I was like, under, "I understand that you're a a competition shooter, so you move probably way more efficiently on a stage." Yeah. Totally understand that. So the problem I took was when they started using that and trying to translate it to real life. Sure. I was like, I was like, I was like, here's a hard pill for you to swallow. Mm -hmm. and, and some guys like, oh, well, shooting is shooting. I was like, yes, but shooting is not combat. Understand that. Yes. Shooting is not violence. Shooting yes. violence can be shooting, but shooting isn't necessarily always violence. Yeah. There's a difference between shooting and killing and killing. Right. So I was like, Understand that he's like, oh, he's like, I would take a, a B class competition shooter over a, a, a G Watt vet that's deployed four times. I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. Sure. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. pretty crazy. I was like, I absolutely would not. And I was like, here's the thing, man. I was like, Clearly, you may be yeah. able to outshoot me on a flat range, but like, I will outkill you every fucking time. Yeah. Like, that's under weird. understand that. Like, when pursuing violence, pursuing violence on someone is a vastly different fucking game. Yeah. I was like, honestly, I would pick. A, st a regular gangbanger in Chicago over a lot of you competition shooters to pursue violence and take your life yeah, because so they understand how to do it. They, they understand the finer thing. I won't say they understand the finer things, but they do it without realizing they're doing the thing that they're supposed to do. Sure. <laughs> like they understand how to conduct a fucking CTR, right? Close target recon. Mm -hmm. Like they don't know that they're doing it, but they're doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they set so, you up and they blast you outside your 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 house, which is yeah. a transition zone, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like mm -hmm. they don't know they're doing that though. Yeah, a transition zone, and like it's it, they're set building up things like pattern of life. I know where he's going to be on yep. Thursday. I know where he's going to do this. That, and and all of these things are, yeah. These and these, I think there's a there is another challenge though. However, is that I, I get the impression that. In 2015, if you taught a CQB class to civilians, everyone, every instructor would assume that you're about to get arrested and get thrown in prison for teaching, <laughs> you know, teaching civilians to walk forward. And don't get me wrong, I, I understand that there's a legal battle, but like if you vote for DAs who put people in prison for defending their lives, then you deserve the crime that you get. Like right. the, the city of Minneapolis, the city of New York City, absolutely deserve to the 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 massive crime spike that that they're dealing with right because they, because like dude you voted for it okay i'm not gonna sit here and hold your hand and tell you that you're a good person <laughs> i'm just the the homeless dude's gonna shove you in front of the train and you're gonna get killed yeah because you voted for it dude it's not it's not it's not no one's you're not the victim it's a suicide <laughs> OK, just you haven't figured that part out yet. And it's I'm really jaded on the subject, but fine. So be it like. But the 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 point on that is. Um, the, yeah, the point on that one is like the I just finished John Lovell's book and on one chapter, he's got a, he He's got one chapter titled The Most Dangerous Man in the Room, which is something that he's talked about in the past and that chapter does it like that hints at something that we've seen before and you that some people are quite familiar with is that like dangerous people do not telegraph how dangerous they are mm -hmm. you know what i mean they don't they don't they don't walk up to you and like flex and be like i'm so strong they just like light your light your car on fire when you're not there <laughs> yeah. you know it's some sociopath shit where you're <clears> like <throat> oh you're like what do we do? What what is what does the American military do? What does the most dangerous people of the American military do? They get up, they jump out of a plane at thirty five thousand feet and show up on your back door when you're sleeping or hung yeah. over, and they smoke you in your bed, and then they go yeah. home. Like they're not like pistols at dawn, ye, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but this whole like the the competition shooter thing is funny. I I, I guess I have to look at it with some sense of sadness. 
Like, <laughs> you know, uh, if you, your argument is that the argument that oh, I'd rather have a B class shooter than a like a four tour. I don't even know if that's his argument, but I guess I've I've seen yeah. something like that. Maybe it's a one tour, maybe it's a two tour, and it's like all that tell all, all the the fact that that thought went into your mind and came out your mouth tells me everything that I need to know about you and that it's you're probably too fucking stupid <laughs> to deal with in real life and like I don't know what to do like it's just it's so like that that is the that is the transgenderism of gun culture you're like <laughs> oh okay he's you clearly shoot a lot of competition and you're looking for friends great dude great now, dude now that's that's probably me being about as aggressive as I need to be but it's just it's not really I should I should I should edit some of that out. That's just way too aggressive. <laughs> no, dude, keep it in there, man. I'd say just keep it in there. Yeah. I, it's, I think it's I think it's a welcome thing. And I was like, we everyone talks about us being censored online. Like, I'll be damned if I censor myself. Sure, sure, sure. So sure. um it's yeah. I think it's one of those things that needs to there needs to be some kind of like consensus made and under just understand that they're different things. And yes, parts of what you do probably apply to another realm, but it doesn't mean you do that thing. Yeah. Well, the uh, the the gun the gun culture is like a series of layers, like an onion, like a Shrek joke. And the participation of being in gun culture, if it's as simple, like if your participation in gun culture is having a pulse and owning an AR-15, then you are on the surface level. Like you're not really. I, I just I don't want to like. It's not that there is an invitation to go deeper. It's just no one can do that for you. Mm -hmm. No one can bring you into, like, the heart of the community. You have to, like, work to be there, I guess. is is, a, is And it's not even... And ultimately, it's not even that every, everything should be. Everyone should be there or can be there. It's, it's not even... I, I, I'm getting way too vague about that. So... <laughs> It's just this weird, like the 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 guy's argument is really strange to me because it's like, why would you even make that argument? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything to me. You're comparing, it for in in your world, it's if you're effectively comparing who would win in a fight, Batman or Superman. Like, that's 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 what that reminds me of. When I was like 14 years old, I got in an argument with my friend whether Cloud Strife or Master Chief would win in a in a fight. Okay, I was 14 years old, dude. That's what happened back then. Like, don't I don't, I don't know. That's that's me just kind of letting the jaded shark <clears throat> in the boat. Yeah, no, and and I think it's I think it's well reserved. Like so, like I said, I think the number one thing to kill in this space is your ego. Yes, it, it has to be because that's where all this stuff is stemming from, right? Yes. It's it, a lot of it's coming from guys that have never had buy-in in any fucking walk of life. Right? That that I won't say that mattered, but that those skills would be tested and actively. So no rite of you, passage is that what you're talking about? Yeah, essentially, like being a you know a military guy or more specific like infantry, you know, soft, you know, regiment, whatever. Mm -hmm. um or you know or or even law enforcement right mm -hmm. all those things have like crucibles that you're gonna go through in your career where you get your life put on the line for very specific things and it's like all right well now it's not there's no speculation now you perform or you you die or someone else dies so yeah. that hasn't been introduced and so it's super easy to be cocky when you've never been challenged Sure. extremely it's like oh i'm this good love. <laughs> yeah I'm like what's well, great man I'm like i'm not saying you're not good that's not what i'm saying at all i'm just saying you're still not tested with even as how how good you are you still haven't been tested in real life yeah and what i tend to see out okay. of professional what i what i what i want to see out of professionals and what i tend to see out of professional or people with a professional mindset is that they don't even take the time to register the ego of uh, i mean they don't they they the the registration of ego in is only a data point that is relevant to the solution of the problem. And mm. so like you think about it this way like you're 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 doing the metaphorical 1980s action hero building a team to go save the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like the people who I know who have are who are only ego are probably not even going to make it to the list. But the people, you know what I mean? Like you, you're, you're going to base things on capability and you're going to look at like selection processes. You're going to think about 
you know, I, some people are just going to be pure nepotistic and they're only going to hire, you know, seals or whatever they are. You know what I mean? That, right. that, hap- that happens. But that nepotism also comes with familiarity of like, I know we, ha- we speak the same language. We know the same stuff. And so um, that ego. Yeah, no, I, I've, I, I, for one, am undergoing a very painful process of watching that ego be stripped away. And right. It's, it's weird to say that publicly now, but it's it's where I've been at for the last year of like, I put so much of my identity. It doesn't even need to be bravado. Sometimes it's your identity. Like I right. put my identity in my work. Like I'm not a person. I am, I do redacted and I, yeah. you know, now <laughs> it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe you should actually just do the work, not yeah. make it your identity. Yep. And, uh, so I think that's, I think that's where we're at right now. And I'm not saying that guys that have been to combat don't do the same thing because they absolutely fucking do. Absolutely. They do the reverse. They're like, oh, I've been to combat. I don't need to fucking shoot. Well, like I just need to be like, shut the, shut the fuck up, dude. Like go out here, get your shit pushed in by some fucking 12 year old. They're going to humble your ass. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Like it's totally okay, man. You're going to suck for now because this is not your realm of shooting. You're not mm-hmm. used to shooting the way these people shoot. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Take that fucking L, take that bruising of your ego, eat it deep down, never let it see the light of day, become okay with it, and then get better. That's it. And then get better. Absolutely. And that's it. That's it. It's not It's not even, but I, I think a lot of guys don't get past that point. They're just like, I've been in combat. I've been proven. I don't need to get better. Like, eh, stop. Wrong fucking wrong conclusion. Go back and try it again. So yeah, that it, it's the same. You have that like for a pro- professional. You there there was a, an event that took place in Minneapolis right after the death of George Floyd, a- and this lady cop <clears throat> ended up shooting this kid. I don't remember his name. And don't really care. <laughs> um, and she like fumbled about it. Um, she was like holding her Glock, and then she yelled "Taser, Taser, Taser!" and pulled the trigger. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I forget. I, and 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 like, and the and the court system just hung her out to dry, like under the bus, just destroyed her. And it was like, tra- it was tragic. And my bias on the situation is actually kind of simple, apparently. Like, but but what ended up happening is uh, appara- or what I understood that took place is that the so many police officers had left the force due to the after effects of George Floyd's death mm-hmm. that they were so understaffed that this lady who was more or less like retired, but not yet. Like she was basically getting ready to like retire yeah. was taken out of the office and put back into the field. And I don't even know if this is true to be clear, but this is what I understand. This is what I think happened. This is what I believe that like from the sources that I talked to and I was researching it on the ground at, with talking to like the uh, police officers in the area and what, what was going on. And their argument was like, uh, she was mostly retired. And so you have that same mentality. If you're like, I've been to combat, I don't need to like do anything, but that's different than not needing to prove yourself, I guess. Right. To yourself. Um, prove yourself to yourself. It's, that's a really, I need to work on that delivery. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's, it's, it's, it's a, it's a long road. It's fairly thankless. Uh, not that you need to be thanked for doing what you believe is right. Right. But it's, uh, it's, it's rough. Like you have to, you have to take a break every now and then and be like, Hey man, like you got your own shit to deal with. Just let it ride for right now. And, yeah, a re reattack at a different time because uh, it's real easy to get to get kind of sidetracked off of your your actual purpose by trying to complete other goals. And I, I know for I know for the, the community day that was something I my heart burned so passionately for for that time. And I was just like I couldn't see anything else but that. And I'm just like this is getting done. Like we are going to show everybody what the fuck this is supposed to look like. And well done. We, yeah. I Excellent. need this to, I, 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 we need to catch fire, man. Uh, so it's, it's hard when people suck on the social level, like they just don't know how to socialize with people and not be weird. Sure. And it's like, just, would you, talk. 
Would you What's be that? Would you be interested in putting out like? Uh, Ultimately, it sounds super simple, but like do a battle drill one alpha version of it. Like, hey, this is what you do: pick a, lo <laughs> pick a location, pick three, or three or four people that you want to teach something, invite them to come teach, set a date three months in advance, and then make every week, or you know, three times a week, make an announcement of it on social media. You know what I mean? Like almost yeah. like a recipe, or like how Damn, would you? Dude. You know what I mean? Like, would you be we're, interested? We're hurting what? bad if we got to go there. We are hurt. Well, we are hurting bad, but yeah. like, uh, but like, like we said, like you said at the beginning, sometimes you just got to knuckle down and do the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, sometimes you just got to, here I am, send me it. And, and I do think I do. Th I like I in, I was even talking to a neighbor the other day and he brought up Strauss Howe generation theory, which is the strong men create good times, good times, create weak men, ah, weak men yeah. create hard times, hard times, create strong men. And, and we were talking about that. And it's like, I legitimately believe we are in the hard times. We, we are in the hard times. Without we're, doubt. we're not, they're not tomorrow. They are today. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And like, and, the, and the people who are the, the people who are, some people are being broken and some people are being hardened. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is what's happening. It's not, tomorrow the apocalypse isn't happening tomorrow it's not like oh my gosh the election's gonna happen no dude we are in the hard time right now buck up stand up volunteer or shut up yeah you know support or leave i guess yeah. that's now that's me being a little critical that's me I, and what i mean by like support I, I don't mean like okay go give money to grand thumb or something like that i don't mean you know that i do mean like the if it, it's okay to complain about a lack of unity and participation, but if you're, but, but we, we need to stop complaining and start acting. And I think that's why I wanted to have you talk about this community event because I was like, yeah, you know what, this this is a good thing. You deserve some recognition. I like it. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. So sincerely do. But well, let's ra let's wrap up then. I mean, Alrighty. if if you're not willing to uh, do a uh, uh, a five paragraph op order class on how to how to plan a community day <laughs> maybe i'll have to find somebody with a more generous spirit oh man I, i'll find if i if i can find some time i will i will do the five paragraph op order for you man for think, the for the interwebs i think you could knock it honestly dude I, I i bet you you could knock it out in like 15 minutes and just make a good instagram post on it it's like it's really simple pick a day pick three classes rotate like this you know what I mean? Announce it this way. Announce it through social media this way, and then like, and 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 confirm like almost like a simple checklist. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, as much as that's annoying that you think, oh, you know, like I have to send an email to remind the company that I'm going to be doing the thing. You just need to tell them, otherwise they'll forget because everyone's busy. Oh, 100 percent. I definitely dealt with that. I had, I, I think I was in contact with them like every other week, and I was like, hey, just making sure we're still good, like, <laughs> you know, because I don't need you forgetting, because that, that'll be a, a nightmare. You have 70 people that are about to come out here, and we don't have a venue like that. Can't happen. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but no, I, I agree with you. It's definitely, uh, it's doable. I'm just, yeah. uh, yeah, just a matter of sitting down and doing it. Shit. What's up? Nope. I'm just, uh, I was just, I got, I got a phone call from somebody that I didn't expect to call today. So I've got to, uh, it's, it's the right time. It is, it, it is a good time to finish up this chat. Cause it was like, oh, wow. Right on, right on the, right on the money. Dude. <laughs> so, well, there, there you go. So do you have another one planned? When's the next one? Um, so we don't have the hard date for the second one yet. So we have a round table meeting with all the instructors on like the 18th of May. And okay. so we're all going to have like a two hour discussion about the, the, the next one. So sure. we already have a hard date for that. Just, we're going to sit down and hash it out. Gotcha. Well, I think, um, I think you're doing something right. And I believe that so long as your heart is in it correctly, this is going to sound like the power of friendship, but so long <laughs> as you are giving of yourself selflessly, I believe that you'll be rewarded. And though those things are canonically tied in some ways, I, I, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to see what you're doing, man. It's a, it is an encouragement. Like, even if I am just telling it to you, it's encouraging to see someone standing up and say, here I am, send me. 
I'll volunteer. We'll figure it out. We'll put this together. And so carry on. So Definitely appreciate it, man. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So any final like schizo rants you want to close off with, or are we going to ruin it? Are we going to end on sentimentality? Oh, no. If we go into a schizo rant, that means it's going to go from a 50 minute conversation to a two hour conversation. So we'll leave it on sentimentality right now. We'll make that a different episode. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Schizo posting with Sky Pirate. You know, there you go. <laughs> I know, I know the, the, the current meta is autism and schizo posting, but we'll figure it out. But other than that, though, well, Marcus, where can people find you? Where can they find your work? How do, if anyone's listening and they want to be, a, they want to either volunteer their time in support of what your, your efforts, or if they want to find out about these events and stay up to tune with you, how do they follow you? How do they find you? Uh, so you guys, you guys can find me on Instagram uh, under sky, sky pirate underscore actual. Um, the actual website for the business is www.cloakedentryco.com. Um, those are the two places I stay the most active. So if you guys want to hit me up on one of those, I will mo most definitely get back to you on my homepage. So. Gotcha. Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, next, uh, we, we still haven't talked enough about lock picking, but it'll be good to see. I hope that your, I hope your endeavors go well. Um, for those who are listening on our end or who are, familiar with what we do here at redacted if you are on youtube go ahead and leave a comment down below about what you would like to see in a community event and if you are in a or if you want to support us you can head over to redactedlc.com and check out our store we might the time by the time this goes live we have a t-shirt that is available that i don't know if i can technically reveal because i might get in tr trouble <laughs> but uh, that's a pre-sale. And then other than that, you can hover, head over to redactedculture.locals.com if you just want to support the show and jump into some of the behind-the-scenes behind the chats. Other than that, we'll talk to you later. Go forth and conquer. <laughs>